just a first uh, precision. When we speak about Darknet, what are we talking about? And uh, we usually we are talking and using the, the image of an iceberg. And we used to say that the surface web, the web that we use daily, is corresponding to the tip of the iceberg. Well, in that uh, sense, Darknet is the bottom of the, of the iceberg. The, 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 high, the, the most hidden part of the hidden web. Um, and of course, um, it allows uh, every kind of purpose, which means also protection. Uh, and originally, the, the dark net uh, came from, from the development of research in the United States to, uh, to protect uh, and ensure confidentiality of information. Uh, today, uh, the, the dark net markets uh, they are important, as, uh, as uh, explained by uh, my colleague Rob Rainwright, because first of all, that's an area of rapid change and global reach. Uh, secondly, it, uh, it, uh, it contains or it implies a policy dimension. It's an important source for illicit and, potential and potent substances. Um, and even if it is hidden, it is possible to study, and uh, this is uh, the first time that we produce such a study and above all such an analysis together with Europol. So is it a, a, an important uh, market? Well, if we relate this to, the, to the, uh, the estimate we produced with Europol last year of the size of the European drug market, it's still a very small part of it. But it's still important. It's uh, around 80, between 80 to 90 millions of euros, which means it's, it's an important value, which is mean, means also that this money is uh, recycled through other serious and organized crime activities. And um, as the commissioner said, uh, drug and drug-related chemicals represent uh, around 62% of uh, the <coughs> total commodities that are available on the darknet. So drugs in, in that darknet area, they represent a very important part of it. Um, the motives for buying on the dark net, uh, they are that uh, people perceive that uh, they offer safer environments. Uh, there is also a perceived higher quality pro of the products. Now, um, this perception is not necessarily wrong, but it is not always guaranteed. And uh, uh, there, there may be a negative uh, uh, side effect in the sense that if it is indeed true that in some cases there is a higher quality and especially higher quality or purity of the substances. This may also mean uh, that uh, it's more dangerous for health. So um, what is perceived as a, as a quality or an asset for the users may be a risk also for them. Uh, certainly the, the, the dark net uh, offers a wider range of drugs uh, <coughs> and uh, it's perceived as giving, offering greater convenience. However, it's important to say that not all drugs are being sold everywhere the same way. And for instance, the new psychoactive substances, uh, with the exception of some countries like the UK, uh, normally they are more sold on the surface web, the top of the iceberg that I was referring to before. <coughs> this study is uh, very unique, also in the sense that uh, it is uh, the first comprehensive study of the dark net since its apparition, uh, which means that we have studied the, together with Europe all the evolution of around 100 different darknets. We have observed the evolution. Uh, we have uh, tried to analyze in details what those uh, darknets were offering. And uh, we have also followed the evolution uh, and also the closure of many of those darknets over the, the, the last years since darknets exist. We, there were more or less 100, and today we estimate that there are around 14 that are in operations. And those are uh, the, the data uh, since last uh, August when we finished uh, the study. Uh, so this means that it's rapidly changing. Certainly, law enforcement action are, are extremely important, and, uh, and Rob Rainwright gave the examples of the last operations coordinated with the support of Europol. Uh, but uh, of course, the, the, the dark nets, they adapt themselves, they protect themselves, and one of the, of the, the objectives is to uh, guarantee better encryption or protection of their users. So it poses an important challenge uh, for, for the law enforcement community. But for the society in general, 
in the sense that uh, the right or the use of encryption, the right to anonymity, is also important for the uh, e-economy. Uh, indeed, if there is no good level of protection, this means that uh, there would not be e-commerce possible. So uh, the challenge is that we need to find the appropriate uh, responses while avoiding that we block any progress and any use for the uh, normal purpose of those technologies. Uh, the last uh, data I would like to share with you before to close and uh, to answer to the questions relate to um, what is the proportion of uh, the, the drugs that are being sold in Europe compared with uh, the global offer for sales. And as far as uh, the, the, the money, the, the value of the sales is concerned, the sales in Europe and Turkey and Norway, uh, as Turkey and Norway as all, are also members of the MCDDA and are covered by this study, the, the EU countries, they represent 46% of global drugs revenue. Uh, in terms of weight, they represent only 34%. But this is due to the fact that according to the different uh, areas in the world, different substances are being sold on the, on the dark net. And, uh, and for instance, uh, if it is uh, cannabis or mar marijuana being sold, the weight of those substances is uh, more important. Uh, last point that you certainly will have noticed in the report is that uh, in the European Union we have uh, three countries uh, where uh, there, are, uh, there, there are more sales originating uh, in Europe. It is Germany, the United Kingdom and Netherlands. And this is uh, valid both for the quantities, but also for the revenues. Um, so uh, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, everything is sold or produced or is uh, truly originating from those countries. For instance, in some cases, uh, uh, there can be some drugs that are in fact sold by uh, providers uh, or vendors that are in the Netherlands, but that are uh, sold or sent uh, from the other side of the border with Germany, for instance. Uh, we see also that there are differences in the, in the ways uh, the, the users are selling and consuming. And I think it, it, uh, it reflects a moment in the history of uh, those darknet. So um, if I may conclude on this point, I would say that uh, it's extremely important, first, that thanks to all the data, including data we got thanks to the law enforcement, in, uh, the law enforcement interventions, on uh, Alpha Bay and, uh, and Hansa darknets, we have a more deep understanding and concrete understanding, but also we have a list of questions. And as this reality is changing very fast, this means that we need to continue to monitor, we need to harmonize some of our methodologies and tools in order to make sure we can catch up with the technical progress. And this is what uh, we are going to continue to do together Europol and the MCDDA, uh, and I would like uh, uh, once more to thank uh, the Commissioner for his support, not only the support but also for his commitment and for the commitment of the Commission to address the broader issue of uh, uh, cyber crime and cyber security and for the necessary dialogue uh, with the tech industry because, again, it's not a question of black or white to close or to open, but certainly it's important to ensure the security and safety, not only of the businesses, but before all of the citizens. Thank you very much.